these for these things. <laughs> this, is a, this is a low cost charity tournament. Yeah. All the money needs to be going to Kids Help Phone, which, by the way, is the charity uh, for this tournament. Is and, it? Uh, I didn't even know charity. that. Great charity. Now kids, I know. Kids Help Phone. Hey, it's always, hey. Very good. Uh, and they've expanded to the internet. So they, I think they have live chatting and stuff for the kids now. Ooh, you see yeah. all those fancy kids on their cell phones in like grade two. Very useful. Very useful. All right. Mr. Maximus Black. Yes, sir. <coughs> Hit me up with the sound of Tubby the Fat not actually being fat. Hey, I'm Tubby the Skinny. I'm approximately 180 pounds, uh, six foot one, very sexy, and uh, I have lots of women. Sounds very accurate. Yeah. Well, this, that was, ironically, that was the exact sentence that he gave me when I first met him. <laughs> that was his introduction. That's, Great. That was the first thing he said to me, and I said, hi, I'm Adam. Much shorter. Wonderful. Very much to the point. Uh, so here on, I believe this is the map they call Whirlwind. Whirlwind. Yes. You know why it's good? Because it looks like one. So people like me who have no idea about maps can say, that's a whirlwind. Yes. And uh, Tubby will be starting up here in the top right position. And up top left, we have the one, the only Kane. And I don't know much about Kane, but uh, obviously uh, he's good because... He's I, done well enough to get here. Now, who did he... I can't remember who he took out to get into this position. I'm pretty sure Tubby beat TT1. One of these pages tells me the answer that you seek. Yeah, he's going to look that up. But uh, PVZ, uh, it's a matchup that I'm struggling heavily with right I went now. Through Masa to get here. Masa. Masa. All right, cool. Masa. Awesome. Yes. Uh, PBZ is is really really tough. Um, I, I'm I'm curious to see what Tubby is going to do here. He is getting his pile on his first pile on in his base. Now I don't know if this is okay. So he's going to go ahead and drop down the nexus. Obviously the second pile will be going down in the natural area. Um, I, I assume he's going to put down a forge next. Yep. And there it is. And up top left, we got Kane just grabbing the uh, the spawning pool, getting one extractor. Looks like he is going to be harvesting some quick gas to get that metabolic boost. And uh, he's going to grab his natural as well. Tubby is working his way up to the top left. And uh, we also got to turn off like the Skype sounds because I can hear Skype. Whoa, who doesn't like hearing Skype sounds? I mean, really. It's, uh, we can do that right now if you uh, alt-tab, sir, since we're not streaming. We can do whatever we need to. Just go down here to the no, no, to the audio thing. Yeah, this is uh, the year 2000 and... Wait a minute. One sec, guys. Yeah. Okay. Muting that so that we don't hear it. There we go. Yeah. We have the technology. We can make it better. All, All right. right. So, uh, gateway going down now, and the uh, cannon as well. So, very, very standard stuff very, coming very up from both uh, players. Absolutely. So, uh, Mr. Black, on the ladder right now, um, on maps of this size, or, or on this map specifically, I think we might have talked about this in the cast earlier, uh, that as a Protoss, a third base here against Zerg is kind of difficult to hold. Yeah, it is. It's, a, it's definitely a lot tougher because you, you get your third here, or you can get it here. And, of course, you know, you've got... Two openings on each side, uh, which can be a little a little tricky. But I mean, these guys are are good players, so they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. <laughs> on a good day, they know what they're doing. But I I I, I do agree. I, I I actually have this map vetoed on my ladder uh, mm -hmm. just because I found it so hard to uh, keep a third. Um, but we'll see what Tubby can do here. I don't know if he's planning on doing a two base play or anything like that. It's kind of hard to tell since it is so soon. Cybernetic score going down. He is going to be walling off here. Um, still no Mothership Core yet in production for Tubby, and uh, no plus one going quite yet, although it is pretty early. He just has enough gas now if you want to go for it. Uh, the first Zealot is coming out, and if we go take a look over on the Zerg end, a third. we do have a third, and this is all good. Obviously, he stopped harvesting uh, gas here on the extractors after he had enough for his uh, metabolic boost, and that's pretty much all she wrote. Yeah, uh, what was uh, what was I going to say? Is something of, of uh, huge importance? Probably not. Uh, I was going to say. Oh, I don't know what I was going to say. I, I for those uh, live TV viewers out there who are watching this, and there are many who don't actually play the game of StarCraft, like myself, and this is why I chose this as my profession. Uh, <laughs> as a, when the mothership core doesn't come out so quick, is that just a, 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 a pretty much a dead giveaway of they're not planning to be aggressive, or can you still be aggressive as a Protoss, just not as effectively? You can, the core. you can be aggressive, but it, it just it, it lets the player know that um, 
you're for yes you're right correct i mean sometimes uh protoss players will go out with like two zealots and a mothership core and they'll drop down a pylon maybe uh with the four gates and try and apply some pressure that way but if you're a really good zerg or even a terran player and you don't see a mothership core you gotta ask yourself well he's obviously not getting it for a reason and that usually means gas and as you can see we do have the stargate and instantly going for Void Rays here, not opting to go ahead and get uh, Phoenix. Very, very standard to go ahead and grab four Phoenix and, uh, and PBZ and try and take map control, pick off a queen or two, get some drones, uh, force some spore crawlers to go down, and then sort of transition depending on if the Zerg decides to go, okay, well, screw you, I'm still going to go Muta, or is he going to go Hydralisk, Roach, that a lot of Zergs are doing, and then you sort of transitioned into uh, Colossus from there. Right, so uh, what we haven't, un we've unfortunately not been able, uh, we haven't been, uh, been able to see these guys in this tournament so far and what their play styles have been like in this tournament, so uh, right now it's hard to say. The second game, I guess, by the time we get there will be more telling as to if they're uh, aggressive or more laid back. Right now it seems like yeah. both of them are pretty pretty laid back. It looks like Tubby is going to be moving out here to see what he can do. He's yep. now that he's got his void ray. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I believe Kane spotted this on the on the way over. This is going to do some damage, this I think. Is, I mean, this is, this is definitely going to do some damage. He's got 10 roaches in production on the way out here, but he still has to inevitably deal with that void ray, which means he's going to have to Ooh. bring a couple of queens somewhere. Comes it's to supply. Block here. Or his only hope, I should say, and uh, no, oh, apparently not. Nope. That Void Ray just said, hey, you know what? I'm feeling generous today. <laughs> I'm going to let you live. So you can go home now. The, uh, the Zealots are doing a lot of damage. They are a plus one. There's one Void Ray in the Misk. And uh, there's absolutely nothing that can touch him except for a couple of queens, and instantly the uh, Zealots are going to be going after those bad boys. The second Void Ray now out on the field, and Tubby is just warping in straight up Zealots. No stalkers, nothing. He's saying, all right, let's just do this. And uh, more Roach is now out on the field here for Kane. Kane's in a little bit of trouble, man. Kane is in a little bit more than a little bit of trouble, I would say, right now, Mr. Maximus Black. Uh, you know, I don't blame him for going pretty much pure Zealot. He has the two Void Rays here to do all of the, you know, he, <laughs> as soon as the Zealots stop for the Roaches, if the Roaches stop to attack the Zealots, right. they catch up with the Void Rays, and the Void Rays end up killing them anyway. So yep. there's no real need to be going something like Stalkers when he can just continue his production of Void Ray. Very nice. Pulling that first Void Ray back on the brink of death. The third one is waiting there, waiting to get into the action. And you're right, just Zealots absolutely everywhere. And I don't know how Kane is supposed to be able uh, to accomplish uh, holding this off without some sick Spore Crawler placements and a couple of lucky pickoffs with some Queens, which he's almost had. Yeah, yeah, Kane is going to survive this, but I mean, damage is being dealt. Let's take a look now. It's, well, you know, I think Kane is doing a relatively good job. He's got 49 drones still. Uh, Tubby's got 42. Tubby isn't going for a third. He is pushing here pretty heavily now with three voids. Of course, these voids are going to do damage, but there is a spore caller there. Uh, more queens in production, three of them actually for Kane. And the Zealots are really not going to do any damage uh, at all. And no, a stray void coming here. I think it was just maybe on a set to a rally point. And uh, now he's basically got four voids and some Zealots. The Zealots are really not going to do a whole lot of work at this point with the roaches out on the field. But um, I don't know. I don't know if this is gonna totally work for tubby it's it, it really all depends here on the micro i guess well uh, yeah it, it's well the, the void rate count if it keeps going up you know, there's only so much that he's going to be able to do uh, against uh, a fleet of Void Ray. It does seem that he got rid of one there. Wow! He is going to throw he's going to GG. GG. Uh, I don't blame him there. You know, he might have 